Hi, innovators. I'm Dave Kesey, founder of the Innovation Leaders Club. There's a misconception what is front end of innovation. And like it says, it's the process that takes place before the development itself. It is known to be one of the weakest practice in the overall innovation cycle and which bring multiple issues. And one of them, it makes the innovation to be too reactive. Therefore, the innovators have to jump into the detailed development with a very unmature concept. And consider the cost of making change depends where you are in the overall innovation cycle. Let's say if you are to make a change on an idea level, that's very quick. At the concept level, you can, can make changes quite quickly. Let's say if you have been developing for the last months and you are to make a change, the change will cost more. And let's say if you have deployed your innovation, changes will cost even more. So earlier you are to make changes, better it is. This is front-end innovation. This is where you're going to get the innovation to mature, to learn, and try to make those changes as possible. So let's have a look at what is in this video, what is an effective front-end of innovation. This video from the Innovation Leaders Club will explain what an effective front end of innovation is. The front end of innovation is often synonymous to creativity. Even though the creativity is part of the front end of innovation, it is only a part of it. The front end of innovation must be structured, integrated with other innovation processes, and it should be initiated proactively to unleash its full potential. More precisely, the video will cover how the front end of innovation is often oversimplified by referring to it as creativity. It is more than that. It is all about being proactive to make innovation mature. As well as how the front end of innovation is a maturation process, taking an innovation from its earliest insight and turning it into a feasible concept proposal. And finally, it will describe how to proactively manage the front end of innovation by using triggers to warn you that it's time to manage it. Don't forget that as usual, you can access for free all of the content on this video, including the PowerPoint presentation, as well as the tools, if applicable, by clicking the link in the description below. Also, if you like the video, don't hesitate to drop a like, Share it with your employees, your colleagues, and even your superiors, and leave us a comment down below. If you don't want to miss a video, subscribe now and get notifications for real and practical innovation management practices coming directly from club members. The Academy works to freely share meeting content discussed during Innovation Leaders Club gatherings. Through online bundles available for a fee, the Academy ultimately provides real and practical methodologies, visuals and tools that can be edited or customized for your organization, training videos and much more based on the Innovation Leaders Club members' shared best practices and the collective proficiency of all the members' knowledge. In many people's minds, the front end of innovation is synonymous with creativity and capturing as many ideas as possible to load up an innovation pipeline. Some might say, throw ideas on the wall and see if any of them attract someone. Google uses this approach called the spaghetti approach. Throw ideas on the wall and see what sticks. Obviously, your organization does not have Google's budget for R&D. Therefore, you need to have a more efficient approach. However, the front end of innovation is far more than a brainstorming exercise in a room with post-its in reaction to an external opportunity. Without a proactive front end of innovation, organizations are often facing this scenario. We've repeatedly squashed this idea for almost 10 years, but now that our competitor is launching it, let's drop everything and ship in July. With the proactive front end of innovation, this scenario is less likely to happen. It may not eliminate all surprises, but it can help in preparing you and your team. Operations can be unpredictable at times, but with this formula, you can be proactive. There are multiple triggers for innovation. One of these triggers could be a novelty from your competition. If the offering is distinctive, your company may want to react with something better. It can also be a catastrophe affecting your organization like the pandemic. Another trigger could be your boss reacting from revenue decrease, profit decrease, 
rising currency, imposition of new tariffs by a foreign administration, or the loss of a major account. It could be a company-wide initiative or a pet project. Innovation triggers can also happen because of something eye-catching during a visit to an exposition or trade fair. Unfortunately, innovation is often initiated by reaction rather than a proactive step towards ambitious visions. This is what the front end of innovation is meant to do, inspire those proactive next steps in the creative process. To ensure front-end innovation is properly done, it has to be included in a full integrated innovation system, which most of the time comprises of five components. If your organization does not have such innovation management system, the front-end innovation system will be unpredictable. And since, since front-end is an important component, but it's rarely urgent, it will ultimately not be well done. Another symptom of being reactive is when a senior manager asks employees to find a way to accelerate the innovation development process because it's perceived as being too slow. While it is often to expedite innovation development, it can come at the expense of employees' well-being. This strategy should only be used when proactivity is no longer an option. An example of this would be if a competitor came in with a new offer that threatened your cash cow. In most organizations, fast-track projects should represent no more than 15% of the project portfolio. Fast-tracking development is an approach that organizations should only use in exceptional circumstances. Similar to the way an ambulance responds to a distress call, the ambulance loses efficacy if the highway is packed with other ambulances. Innovation management is the same. The best way to get ahead of this is knowing where to put your efforts. This is the main purpose of proactive management in the front end of innovation. For a brand owner, there should be no rush for about 85% of your innovation projects. The focus should be on an early start. We have developed a 60-page visual guidebook on how to develop an innovation strategy. It is a fully illustrated step-by-step -step guide to building the foundation of an innovation system. Click the link in the description below to download it for free. To simplify things for your management teams, colleagues, and employees, this management system presents with five key components. Innovation strategy, front end of innovation, portfolio management, development, and launch. Innovation strategy is the first component, and it's the foundation of an innovation management system. It quantifies the objectives for innovation, defines areas of focus, and specifies an implementation plan. Following the innovation strategy comes the front end of innovation. So what is the front end of innovation? The front end of innovation is what happens when business opportunities are identified and selected. Once the best opportunity is agreed upon, many ideas are generated depending on the response to each thought. Multiple ideas are then combined and enriched, and from this, concepts are developed and their feasibility is evaluated. The point of this exercise is to gather enough data to justify whether or not the concept is viable at the project portfolio review. From there, it is possible to decide which opportunity is the best when pursuing development. The following three components of an innovation management system are directly impacted by the front end of innovation. Project portfolio management, innovation project transference, and finally, the system launch phase. Once the front end of innovation is completed, project portfolio management follows. The purpose of this is to select the best project proposals based on the previously defined innovation strategy. This should be completed while considering your organization's development and launch capacity. The Innovation Project Portfolio Review aims to maintain a good balance between high and low risk projects with a central goal of maximizing the value of the investment in innovation activities. Once the project is selected and the resources allocated, the innovation project moves on to the development phase. Ultimately, this is where the innovation is developed, tested, and validated by customers. The last component of the innovation management system is the launch phase. It encompasses the commercial and operational launch. It is also where innovation efforts start to be monetized. These linear components are easy to follow and understand, and this is where their strength lies. They're simple to communicate, which makes them ideal for teaching to the rest of your organization. 
The reality is that an innovation process will need to be repeated in order to achieve your desired results. So keeping it linear will keep it simple. As mentioned in the introduction, front-end innovation allows innovation to mature in a very cheap way because we can do changes at very low cost. In order to get a common language, it is important to clearly state at what maturity stage are we in the front-end innovation. Let's have a look at those maturity stages. Here is a visual representation of the maturation of innovation results you will see with the bundle. The innovation strategy is composed of strategic arenas, which are the area of focus for your innovation effort. A strategic arena should last between 5 and 10 years within an organization. The front end of innovation phase can be separated into three steps, each aimed at helping the process of maturation. The lowest level of maturity is the opportunity, and there should be multiple opportunities within each arena. Opportunities can be identified as any of the following sources, a former or latent need, a problem that needs solving, a new technology, a new trend, and so on. Ideas can then be generated to seize your opportunity, and these ideas will be more focused. This is the most embryonic form of innovation. It's step one. A simple idea on a post-it note is what starts it all. That idea can then be refined and combined with other ideas into a concept. A concept is an idea that has been well-defined. It is a one-pager as opposed to a one-liner. After teamwork and combined ideas, the process of refinement begins. It will eventually be presented at a project portfolio review where it will compete against other well-defined concepts. Only the most promising of those will be selected, funded, and staffed. After the selection is made, resource allocation can begin and the concept will officially become a project. The selection process is vital to your organization's innovation strategy. If done correctly, it will mobilize key multifunctional stakeholders. It should get to the point where it no longer solely depends on the scope of your work or your marketing and R&D teams. The concept can then be commercialized. Here's a visual representation of how you can use the maturation process proposed by the Innovation Leaders Club. To mature, you will focus on one specific arena in which to identify opportunities. It is important to select which opportunity you'll execute, since you'll define its scope and help to clarify what you're looking for. In order to address one of these opportunities, multiple ideas will need to be brought to the table. Having defined the scope of the opportunity will increase the potential for higher quality ideas. This will also help in identifying ideas that can be combined to create a whole concept. Such concept will go through a feasibility evaluation and then will compete against other concepts in the project portfolio review. During this meeting, only the best concepts will be selected and resources will be allocated. It is only by then that the concept can be called a project. As you might have noticed, the maturation process is a combination of the diverging cycle and the converging cycle. It focuses on identifying the potential opportunities, selecting one, and generating multiple ideas of solution. Then the process repeats by picking the best ideas and grouping some to develop concepts. The divergence-convergence process ends at the portfolio review when the leadership team select the best concept. This is the best approach when it comes to the maturation of innovation. Also, as mentioned in the introduction, the conduct of proper innovation activities requires some time, especially calendar time. Therefore, proactivity is the key to get the innovation team members started into the front end of innovation efforts. The quality of the concept which comes out of this process is directly proportional of the level of effort invested in the front end of innovation. In order to improve the performance of innovation in your organization, you may also want to consider a culture change. The focus needs to be on proactive innovation as opposed to reactive innovation. When an organization is reactive, it means the market, customers, and competitors are the ones directing your innovation plan. When an organization is proactive, the market insights are guiding your decisions, but you are in control of the direction. Proactive innovation means getting on the front end of innovation. Such proactivity should have a primary focus towards the front end of innovation activities. The question now becomes, how do you implement a proactive front end of innovation process? 
The first step is to stop directing all of your effort into reacting to customer demands or the so-called fires. Stop being a fireman. Instead, become a proactive innovation manager. Start by identifying where the organization wants to put its innovation efforts, namely the strategic arenas. Then spend time planning and conducting front end of innovation activities to gain insights. For example, meet, listen, and witness customer needs to proactively identify sore spots. You have a customer who calls you each year with a lot of demands and requests. Being proactive means calling, or even better, visiting this customer before they call you. While discussing the customer's current needs, you'll open the door to uncover other issues. In doing so, you might gain some insight and take that with you when speaking with other customers. Who knows, they might have similar needs. Then work on concept development and present potential solutions to the customers before they even ask for them. If you let your customers make your innovation decisions, they might shift you in a direction you're not interested in. Generally, customers who ask for new solutions are heavy users or fans of your services. Therefore, they are not necessarily a reliable representation of your overall target market. In fact, some organizations have ended up over-designing their offerings. Customers usually ask for what they know, which ultimately leads to Me Too projects or simple tactical innovations. When it comes to looking for who is responsible for the front end of innovation, the seat is often empty. No one knows the overall success required to get the innovation to a mature level for project activation. In club members' well-structured organizations, it is mainly the role of product managers to manage those activities, like a conductor would for an orchestra. This can also mean that the product management team doesn't have to get everything done by themselves. A good way to become proactive involves managing a product or offer lifecycle, which is one of the product manager's primary responsibilities. Even if your organization does not have a product manager, someone is likely managing the product lifecycle informally. It could be the sales team or even the CEO. For example, Apple had one of the greatest product managers of all time, Steve Jobs. Let's talk about how an innovation will mature from the innovation cycle to the market. Once an opportunity is identified or an innovation idea is submitted, the innovation cycle starts. It typically begins at the front end of innovation, where the innovation development and market launch phases follow. As the innovation hits the market from its introduction phase, growth, maturity, and the decline phases follow. All of these become part of the market cycle. Identifying where your offering is in its life cycle is a powerful tool to trigger proactive innovation management. Many organizations use this trigger to initiate an innovation project when current sales offerings are declining, just like products 1 and 2 on this chart. They now realize that they will need to replace those offerings, so speed is now of the essence. A proactive approach, however, could trigger an innovation project when the product sales hit late maturity, just like products 3 and 4 on the chart. Unfortunately, after maturity, there's always a decline. By triggering the innovation in a proactive way, innovators are able to properly do their jobs. An ideal example would be if products 1 and 2 began to decline because sales are shifting to products 6 and 7, which are now growing. Projects B and C are being developed so that they can eventually replace products 3 and 4. Knowing which offerings are in the cycle's later stages helps you pinpoint which offers you might want to replace. In turn, this helps you plan your innovation strategy. This is a great opportunity to reassess whether or not some markets are still worth addressing. This reassessment exercise should be part of a portfolio review that occurs on an annual basis, a review which, when executed, triggers the front end of innovation phase. Thus, the underperforming product becomes an innovation opportunity. I hope this video was informative and will be fruitful to enhance your innovation performance. As a last comment, remember, front-end innovation occurs prior to the development. Therefore, if your organization wants to improve execution of innovation, it is worth it to start at the front-end innovation level. See you in the next video. Cheers. If you haven't already done so, you can get your hands on our popular 60-page visual guidebook for free. Click the link in the description below. 
Don't hesitate to watch the next video to learn even more about innovation management practices.